So I'm gonna tell you about some of the craziest and most unexpected footage I ever got while doing field research. But I gotta give you a little bit of background story first. So everybody knows that reef fish are adorable and inspiring, but there's something that most people don't know about reef fish. Reef fish got jobs, baby. Jobs that reef fish have may actually be even more important than their adorableness, which is pretty hard to imagine. Just like a landscaper removes weeds from your yard, reef fish remove weeds from the coral reef. Seaweeds can do serious damage to corals. They may seem harmless, but to a coral, seaweeds make your passive-aggressive aunt look like a cuddly kitten. So great, reef fish eat this seaweed that poses a really big threat to corals and the whole ecosystem? No problem, right? Seaweed out of the picture. Wrong. Nature is never that simple. We still see seaweed all over many reefs. How could this be? What are these fish just lazy? Let me ask you a question. How well would you be able to do your job if you knew you were being stalked by a tiger? That's right, reef fish have to deal with a lot of problems. One of them is get enough food to survive. The other one is don't get eaten by predators that are constantly trying to kill you. We see in a lot of ecosystems that prey are often faced with a dilemma. They can go out to more exposed habitats that a lot of other prey don't want to go to, and they can get a lot more food in the process because there's no one there to compete for that food. That food can make them big and strong and they can have a lot more adorable babies to pass on to the next generation. But there's a catch. There's more predators that can attack you and kill you there. And so because the job of reef fish is so important, I wanted to do an experiment to ask, as we get further away from the safe haven of their houses, which are the corals, how do reef fish perform their jobs differently? To test this, we built these cinder block seaweed hors d'oeuvre platters. We put these platters out at a bunch of different distances further and further away from the shelter of the reef. We videotape everything that happens so that we can catch who are these gutsy fish that are doing all this eating. Of course, we didn't want anything to happen to the video cameras, so we really securely and tightly bolted these guys in place facing the seaweed platter. So we've been doing this experiment replicate after replicate each day for about a month. On this particular day, I was with my undergraduate assistant, Julie. We went to go pick up the cameras and we noticed something really odd. The furthest camera, which again was bolted into position, was jerked into an upright position facing the sky. It's unsettling. This also meant that we lost the footage that was important for the experiment. We get back to the dock at about dusk. I'm of course really excited to figure out what did this to the camera. Who's responsible? for moving this camera that was really hard to move. So I rinse all the camera gear, head right up to my office, and I immediately start clicking right through the footage to try to figure out who did it. I found out really quickly. Who knew that triggerfish hated science so much? This is a predator, but it's not a piscivore. It's not a fish eater. So it's not the type of predator that we would expect to scare the fish in our study, but these things go to town on sea urchins. And what does a GoPro camera look like to a fish that's never seen it before? Possibly a sea urchin. Unfortunately for him, GoPro makes a pretty amazing case. Camera still works great. And so in the end, the researcher who wanted to study how predators scare reef fish was himself scared by a predator. GoPro, I'm still waiting on that sponsorship. Call me. He's gone for now.